In a move that I suppose isn't at all surprising, but is plenty disgusting, Don Jr., Eric Trump, and even Marjorie Taylor Greene have all posted photos of the daughter of Judge Juan Marchand online, the judge responsible for overseeing the Manhattan DA case. Here's a screenshot of Don Jr.'s post, and of course, I've blurred the image out. It links to a Breitbart article suggesting that the judge's daughter worked on the Biden-Harris campaign. Now, first off, I don't even know if that's true, and I wouldn't exactly take a Breitbart article at face value, but second, and more importantly, even if it is true, this is America and the family members of judges are free to do whatever they want. I don't remember it being illegal for a judge's daughter to work on a political campaign. And if it is illegal for family members of judges to be politically active, then I'll wait patiently for the right to call for Judge Clarence Thomas to step down. But until then, spare me the faux outrage. And of course, Republicans will point to this and claim, oh, well, Don Jr. and Eric and Marjorie Taylor Greene were all just highlighting a story that's already been published and is public. And that's technically true, but we all know what they are trying to do. We all have common sense here, and we can understand that when Trump's biggest mouthpieces post on the social media to their tens of millions of followers a photo of the judge's daughter that they're trying to intimidate and threaten and incite violence. And I say that because it's already happened. The last time the MAGA wing of the Republican Party got its marching orders, a tweet from Trump saying, come to Washington, D.C., be there, will be wild, they knew exactly what to do. They didn't have to say, bring weapons, bring pepper spray, bring blunt objects, bring guns, because that was all implied, and it is exactly what those people showed up with anyway. Hell, they even showed up with a fucking gallows. And so now, Don Jr. and Eric and Green don't have to say anything besides this is the judge's daughter because they know that their supporters understand what they want. And so this way, those Republican operatives will still have plausible deniability if and when something terrible happens by saying, we didn't call for any violence, we just posted an article. With the subtext being that they posted an article to a base that is known to be violent. In other words, they know exactly what they're doing and what they want their supporters to do with that information. In fact, Trump's lawyers were asked about the post that Trump retruthed on True Social, showing him holding a baseball bat next to Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg, and this is how he tried to absolve Trump. President not use language. He requested that everybody involved Correct, both refrain from using language that's inappropriate. Talk and about- by the way, that includes, that includes the witnesses the witnesses for the people um, who are talking just as much as the It also includes the former president swinging a baseball bat at the head of the Manhattan DA. Well, I don't know where you got that because if that you... That was a tweet that was, out by the former president. That, no, it tweet. wasn't. And first of all, first of all, <laughs> so first of all, that picture was not him swinging a baseball bat. I mean, if you want to distort the facts, go right ahead. I won't address that. Yes, facts. it is. He wasn't swinging a baseball bat at anyone's head. That was a picture of him showing off an American-made bat. But Someone we'll, else we'll, put a picture of the district attorney next to him and in an article posted that. That's wait, not his wait, article, it's not his photos. That's not using language that incites... Guys, here's what we're going to talk about today. Here's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the insufficiency of this case. Oh, so even though Trump saw the post and reposted it, he's not responsible for reposting it because someone else wrote the original post that Trump then rebroadcast to millions of people. And of course, when he was next to Alvin Bragg with a baseball bat, he wasn't trying to make any type of a implicit threat. He was simply showing off some American manufacturing, which just so happened to be alongside the DA that's currently prosecuting him. Talk about a coincidence. And here I was thinking, that Trump was making a violent threat when clearly he was just celebrating American manufacturing. (laughs) How stupid of me. And let's be clear, this wouldn't even be the first time that Trump supporters committed violence against the judge's family. Just a few years ago in 2020, a Trump campaign volunteer named Roy Den Hollander went to a home of District Judge Esther Salas and opened fire, killing the judge's 20-year-old son and wounding her husband. The shooter would complain that he wasn't able to wear his MAGA hat in the streets of New York City and railed against Judge Salas as a, quote, lazy and incompetent Latina judge appointed by Obama, which is evocative of Trump's own attacks on another Hispanic judge, Judge Curiel, who Trump claims wouldn't rule impartially on a fraud lawsuit against Trump University because his Mexican heritage was, quote, an inherent conflict of interest. All of which is to say, the link between what these MAGA personalities say and what their supporters do in response cannot be ignored. The violence isn't an accident here, it is the point. But knowing that this family cannot stop inciting violence, that does raise the question about a gag order, an order by the judge that would prevent Trump from discussing certain things in public. And yet, as of now, there was no gag order put in place. 
According to reporting from inside the courtroom, concerns about incitement to violence were raised, but the prosecution didn't specifically ask for a gag order. And so that's reason number one that it wasn't granted. But the judge went on to say that even if the prosecution had ordered one, he wouldn't have granted it. For now, he did warn both parties to tamp down the inflammatory rhetoric. And so it's looking like he'll take things incrementally, meaning that if Trump does ratchet up the rhetoric, given the fact that the judge already admonished him, the judge could then consider putting a formal gag order in place, which knowing Trump is a really, really good possibility. Here's MSNBC's coverage of exactly this issue. The prosecutor went on to say that Mr. Trump has made recent uh, threatening emails and speeches, both directed at New York City, the courts here in New York, the justice system, and the district attorney's office. He said that these are irresponsible social media posts that threaten death and destruction and even World War III. He said that these public statements to the district attorney, which included a photo of him swinging a baseball bat towards the district attorney's head, uh, was very uh, concerning. They're concerned uh, about this and, and what effect it will have on potential jurors and witnesses. But they said that this will not dissipate the office and they're seeking a protective order regarding discovery materials. They're very concerned that um, some of the uh, attorneys or some of this may be leaked or that President Trump himself would use some of that discovery in a way that would compromise a potential trial. So again, no gag order for now, but that certainly doesn't rule one out in the future. But we shouldn't breeze over the fact that a former president of the United States and his adult sons are so eager and willing to use violence as a political tool. These are people who know that they can't win on the merits, and so their only option is to try and intimidate people, hurt people, or threaten people. The fact is that Republicans gave up a long time ago on trying to win with their ideas, which is owed to the fact that their ideas are wholly unpopular. No one is voting for a party whose platform is banning abortion, banning books, attacking the LGBT community, pretending that climate change doesn't exist, protecting gun manufacturers, coddling fossil fuel companies, and giving tax cuts to millionaires and billionaires. And so instead of, oh, I don't know, changing their platform, the GOP is instead just trying to take power by force. Democracy is under assault across the entire country by a Republican party that knows that unless it lies, cheats, and steals its way into power, that it'll never win power fairly. And Donald Trump is just one more example of that same corruption that has pervaded the entirety of the Republican party. This is a person whose entire identity is predicated on his willingness to commit crimes. If you needed an example of the fact that that rot has pervaded the party from top to bottom, Donald Trump is exactly that. So I have zero doubt that we'll see more threats of violence coming out of the Trump team. But remember, these aren't happening from a position of strength. They are happening out of weakness and desperation and fear. If Trump had any viable defense in this case or the others, he wouldn't need to try and intimidate those holding him to account. But the fact that he is tells you everything you need to know. Before you go, a quick announcement. I've started a Spanish YouTube channel. Democrats desperately need to be able to appeal to Spanish speaking audiences, so this is me doing my part. To help that channel get going in the algorithm so that we can finally start spreading our progressive message and breaking the conservative stranglehold on Spanish speaking media, please subscribe and watch a few videos. The link to that channel, called Brian Teller Cohen Espanol, is right here on this screen. And of course, to see more of my content in English, make sure to subscribe to this channel as well. The link is also right here on this screen. Thanks so much for watching.